Welcome, folks. As you can see, we have a real smooth guest on our hands and another great show of Game Beyond the Game. Officially, welcome to Game Beyond the Game presents Talk That Talk, inspiring conversations with professional athletes, where we inspire our audience as we explore finding vision and purpose in life and discuss tools to overcome life's transitions. I am Sam Pierce II, your MC, and we're joined by founder Prince Daniel Jr. Officially, Prince, how are you doing today? Mm-hmm. Man, I am amazing. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling blessed. I'm looking forward to this incredible individual that we're going to interview. Um, I have some past history with them. We played on the same um, football team uh, in a National Football League, so with the Ravens. So go ahead and do your thing. I'm looking forward to it, man. Cool. Awesome. You know me. Going to bring up folks like the rock stars they are. And also, just so we're clear, this is pre-recorded. I know you may be heartbroken. You're not here with us live, but you're certainly here with us live in spirit. Today, we have the man, the myth, the myth, the legend that is Ronnie Prude. Ronnie is a former NFL cornerback for the Baltimore Ravens, originally from Louisiana. We already know how the Louisiana boys do. He attended LSU and received a football scholarship where he went on to win a national championship in 2003. He is now the proud dad of two to Braylon Prude and Taylor Jackson and currently spends his time training and coaching young men. Wherever you are, clap your hands, stomp your feet for Ronnie Prude. Ronnie, how you feeling today? How you doing? Mm-hmm. Bless, bro. Bless. So, man, hey, one, it's an honor to be here with both of you, uh, both of you guys. So, uh, especially, it's great seeing you, Prince. It's been a hey. minute. <laughs> it's been a minute, bro. Yo, how long has it been? We're going to reverse engineer this. How long has it been since you all have connected and really hung out? Ooh. 2009, 2010. What? A decade. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah actually, 2000, I want to say 2008, Prince. 2008? Yeah, I think it's 2008, so that's the last uh, That's 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would ask, either one of you all can answer, how much has changed in 12 years? Obviously, a lot of smiles already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, a lot has changed in 12 years. What, 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 what good changes have happened in 12 years? What good change have happened in 12 years? Both of you, let, let each other know. Uh, Prince, you want to go first? Or are you- yeah, I mean, it's it's your show. I mean, you know, uh, it's your no platform. Yeah, um, uh, a lot has changed. I uh, uh, was uh, blessed to have two beautiful kids. Like I said, a uh, proud father. Uh, man, just the transition from uh, where I was mentally back then to 2008 to now. So uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing on my end. So just nice. Prince. Amazing. Amazing. Enjoying life and living. That's, no, awesome. that's right, Prince. What about you? What's the 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 best the, the best change in the last twelve years? Man, just uh, family and like as, as Ronnie said, the transition and the maturation uh, through life and where we are in this day and age, um, and being able to cope um, with leaving the past behind and and living in the present. And making the future uh, better than than what we envisioned it, right? And so um, that has changed, and 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 just you know, just understanding who I am and what my purpose is while I'm here on planet Earth. So, yo, awesome, man. It's a, yeah, every day above ground is a good day. So, it's hey. always, you know, glad to be here. And uh, as you all said, just kind of mature and understand and appreciate more of life, you know, as it's been given to us, you know, each day. So, Ronnie, jumping right into it. So, we know you're, you're from Louisiana. Tell us more about, you know, where you're from and where, the, let's say, the love of the game of football came, you know, in the early in the early stages of life. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Um... Originally from, uh, like you said, from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, and so when I was young, me and uh, my family, uh, that's enough to still have my mother and father still here uh, on this earth today. Uh, still both been married, still married to, to this day. Uh, when I was young, moved to Dallas, Texas. Moved to Dallas, stayed in Dallas. And so um, just uh, a little kid with my uh Two sisters, older sisters out there, and an uh, older brother, and uh, actually three sisters or whatnot. So the love of the game for me just came at a young age, man. My dad just had me out there, out in the field, and on the court, just working the dog crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> working the 
I don't crap at it, but I love them for it. I love them for it as I got older. So, um, as like I said, as a young kid, just just love the just to love the play game, just being competitive with my friends around the neighborhood, outside, just ripping and running, uh, running up and down the street barefooted with uh, friends trying to race and all that. So, at a, I, I got a good grasp and love the game at a, at a real young age. So it just always stuck with me. Awesome. You know, that that's amazing. So go from playing with Pop Warner young to high school. Was that transition, you know, because we're, we're going to hop into transitions now. And that transition, let's say, to high school, to college, what was that like? And I know, you know, Prince may dive into what that was like transitioning for you from the college to the league, but what was that initial transition like? Okay, let me, let me, let me double back for you because I'll tell you my transformation, um, my transition from, uh, from uh, Dallas going back to Louisiana. So as a little kid in Dallas, uh, middle school, elementary middle school, so I was a, a kid that was, you know, fairly decent, pretty good in sports, basketball, football, but we're not a track. And so um, one, going into my uh, eighth grade, well, my eighth grade year, me and my father decided to, uh, he asked me, hey, say, Ronnie, do you want to uh, go to Louisiana? to, uh, you know, play sports, attend high school down there. And so I had my uncle, he was a high school coach down at the high school um, that uh, I would be attending. So he was always telling my father that, hey, this school is a really pretty uh, pretty big uh, school with a lot of athletes, you know, a lot of college coaches come, Division One college coaches come and check out the athletes. So it was a school known for producing, you know, good uh, athletes, uh, a Stro- guy named Stromile Swift. Reginald Robertson, Wendell Davis, if, uh, that's he's a little bit older. So, uh, so guys like that, and so my uncle coached them. And so, um, and so me and my father decided to, uh, that was um, a decision that is probably be- in my best interest. And so heading down there, that transformation was totally different for me. And so that's when, uh, that's when the discipline and the structure, all that headed into me. And I hated it at first. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> I wasn't used to that. Mother and father lived in the house, and so I was the only, uh, I was the, uh, the boy, the baby boy, and so I always got my way. Poor little kid, I, I admit. So going down there, that transition was a little way totally different for me living with my uncle, and so uh, that's when the structure and the discipline and the guidance took over in my life, and I'm forever grateful for that because I, to be honest, I wouldn't be here where I'm at today. Um, if it wasn't for that transition, oh, wow, man. Man. You, you, you're speaking my language because I, I was able to get that dif- discipline later on in life, you know, from my father, and he had this African upbringing, so mm-hmm. it was like, oh man, why did I? Why did my mom let me move here? Like, what was she thinking? Like, come on, man! And yeah. you know, my dad every Saturday, I got to cut the grass and 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 clean the house, and yeah. if I don't. Man, my dad used to do me wrong if if, <laughs> if if there was a speck of dust somewhere. Like, you know, I I clean it up and, and get fresh and ready to go wherever I was going. And he'll be like, "Did you clean the TV?" And I'll be like, "Yes." And so he'll go over there and, and rub his I mean, run his finger over the TV. If he collect dust, he'll be like, and he'll just wipe it on my shirt like that. And I remember I had an all white shirt on. I was like, "Gangster, that dude done it." He was like, "Huh?" You clean the TV. Yeah. You didn't clean the TV. Go back there and change your shirt. I don't care about your shirt. I was like, man, I don't know what well, yeah, to do yeah, yeah. That's how that's how uh, my uncle was on Saturdays. We'll get up, you play, play some music. We we'll clean right. that whole house. I, that's what I said. I right. learned to clean the whole house right there. Wipe the baseboard, toilets, all. <laughs> exactly. Um, Hey, brothers, do they do kids still white baseboards? Do they still clean up? It's so it's interesting to now I'm whether it be yard work or landscaping, I'm so thankful for those skills. And I even I got strong physically stronger from doing that kind of stuff. Is that still happening now? What do you all see that? I feel like it's such a relic being like, oh, they don't know what I was doing. They don't know what was watching baseboards. Ronnie, what do you think? Um it it 
it always depends on that individual. And uh, like I said, with my son, I try to instill that into him uh, to this day. So when he's with me, uh, yeah, we, we're going to get up. You're going to clean up. So I have to endure that at a young age. And I think that, you know, it helps out when, once you get a little older and uh, just knowing able to, uh, you know, take care of yourself and, and things that are around you. You appreciate, you appreciate just the small things a little bit more. And so when bigger stuff comes, you know. Yeah, you're grateful for it. So. Right, it creates that character. It builds that character, you know, yeah. and especially young men because, you, you, like Stan mentioned, we need to have those technical skills, man. Just to, if you if if you think about it, you become an adult and you don't you don't know how to clean up, man. It's it's gonna get rough for you. It's gonna be real, real, real <laughs> rough for you, man. But speaking of rough, yo, how did you get to LSU? I want to know about that, man, because. I, I, man, LSU, that's, right. that's the LSU. Like, how did you get to <laughs> LSU, bro? Like, tell me, like, share that. Uh, let me share that story. So going into my um, uh, sophomore year, uh, I'll double back. My uh, god brother, Reginald Robinson, uh, who lived with my uncle as well, he was uh, heavily recruited coming out of high school too as well. So he went to uh, LSU. So me going into uh, – my sophomore year, he was already down at LSU. And so um, I went down and my uncle took me down there for a summer camp. And at that time, Jerry DiNardo was the head coach. And so um, went down there, had a, you know, a little strong little camp. Um, and so that was my first uh, official offer from uh, a college. So I was amped coming back, coming back home. And uh, I mean, I got an offer from uh from LSU, but basically, you know how stuff goes with the, uh, you know, college right now. So the coach say, "Hey, well, you got to offer." So you just don't never know. You got to produce in my eyes. So I was excited about that coming back home and um, and uh, looking forward to the upcoming season. And so had a pretty good, you know, high school career. You know, playing uh, quarterback and uh, receiver. And so uh, when he got fired, that's when Coach Saban came in. And so when Saban came in, you know. Still got that same uh, same treatment with recruiting and all that, and so I, I took uh, other official visits, but to ten to be completely out of Tennessee, and I I love LSU. Don't get mad at me for saying this, but Tennessee is a school that I I had a great visit, and I really really wanted to end up going there. But coming back, talking to my uncle, you know, weighing out the pros and cons, and so he kind of you know clicked in my head like. Oh, it's probably the best fit for you. You being a uh, in-state guy, and so they'll take care of you, you know, and all, all that. And so that 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 is how it was, man. And so um, just blessed enough to uh, stay in the state of Louisiana and play for a great uh, a great university, and uh, obviously for a great coach, as you you can tell right now, with what he's doing at Alabama. So that was a it was a blessing. So most definitely, man. I, I think it's really important that. Um, that you had that support, you know, your uncle just there helping you make your decisions because, you know, you're you're a young man still trying to grow up and 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 be a young a young man, right? Um, and and for somebody to help you make your decisions, that that was incredible because I didn't have that, I didn't have that. I was just like, uh, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go there. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that that's solid, man. So oh, yeah. I was, kudos to your uncle for doing that. Shout out to your uncle. Um, I, I, like you said, the support system. I was like you said, was very blessed enough to have a lot of uh, people around me that um, had the best, my best interest at heart. So, my uncle, my well, you know, obviously my mother and father, they they wasn't in Louisiana at the time, and so they were still in Dallas. And so, them coming down to uh, you know visit me and see me play, and obviously my sisters and uh, all my sisters and brothers and all that. So. And uh, like I said, my god brother that was already at LSU, and then we, like I said, a, a good buddy of mine, uh, you know, uh, brother, uh, still to this day, uh, Stromile Swift. So, yeah, and so that I, uh, yeah, Swift, yeah, Swift, they <laughs> part with me uh, my, my freshman year. So he was a, uh, he was down at LSU. So, man, I had a close knit group around me to keep me, keep me humble and uh, on the right track. And so I'm forever grateful for that. Wow. Um, amazing. So you 
enter, obviously, in LSU, you mentioned the national championship, and then we're transitioning into the pros. What was the most, let's say, what was the, the most difficult part about that transition and let, going in, and what was the most enjoyable part about transitioning into, you know, the NFL? Uh, man, the, uh, the most, I would say the most difficult uh, part for me was uh, just, uh, how can I say it, when, because coming from LSU, we had a really strong, uh, it was ran just like a, basically like an NFL program uh, with Saban. And so the, my, my mindset going into it was, you know, pretty strong and kind of being focused on what I had to do. And so that was the, I want to say that was the easier transition part for me because because when most guys get there, they're on their own making money, just want to rip and run, be wild and do all that. But I was just a little bit disciplined enough to what uh, the goals that I was trying to set out for myself coming from an undrafted free agent. So I knew coming from the bottom that, hey, you really have to grind to uh, this, what you really want to do and then make the team. And so that was the biggest, um, the the most easy thing for me, as I say, coming to tell us you, but I want to say the hardest thing was just, you know, kind of the little small stuff as studying, as studying film and all that. That's what I wish I could have got that grasp at an early age. Cause I think that would have really took me over the hump just sitting back because me watching guys like Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, just constantly, constantly study Jerome Sapp, you know, uh, Bart Scott, those guys had great, great guys on the team. And so uh, Steve McNair, watching them guys transit and study. And I knew the game, I used to come in and I always think it was more of a, a the, the physical aspect, but, you know, it's basically is 90% mental up here and 10% physically. So, that I would say that was a hard transition coming into uh, just grasping concept that you have to study really. Wow, that's you, you know, Stan. A lot of people don't know about that, man. As as Ronnie mentioned, he said he think it's the physical. Uh, I, I know when I came in, I thought it was a physical too. Like just insert me in there. Like I got this. <laughs> you know, when you're in college. It's 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 still kind of easy. It's like the X's and O's, and you know you run over here, you run over there, and and then um, after you do so much studying, you got to go to class. So mm-hmm. you know they hold your hand, but when you get to the NFL, there's no class afterwards. <laughs> it's like, all right, we just finished watching film. Let's go outside and let's go put this to to, to work. You're like, huh? Okay, all right, good. Uh, 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 what what just happened? What, what, uh, 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 oh man, like how did I forget to play? How did I forget my my, uh, my summit? And everything at a high pace. It's like you get out there and you, you get your first stretch on. It's like, ah, let's go. Like, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, for real, practice just started. Man, it's moving so fast. And so, like, what, what, what Ronnie mentioned, what you mentioned, Ronnie, is like, is, is the epitome of, of like being prepared, you know, for success. Uh, getting in there, becoming a student of the game. You know, for me, I knew I, I knew what I where I lacked, and that, I lacked in that same area. So that's when I went home when I started. I started working out and studying at the same time. Like, oh, I got to learn this because it was the pressure was on, man. When when you have like you mentioned those big names, Ed Reed, Hello Tinata, Ray Lewis, Bart Scott, Adelius Thomas, Chris McAllister, Smart Road, like <laughs> like just the, the the name keeps going on. Kelly Craig, Double J, Trevor Price. I mean, the defense was the number one defense in the league at the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, when you come in there, you, you don't have no room for, for any F-ups. You know, yeah. you, you got to get it how you live because they're they, they going to push you and they're going to make you great. So, you know, how, how was it playing with those guys, man? Man, it was um, it, it was um, it was great. You come coming from a kid that's uh, from Louisiana and uh, watching – Watching guys like Ed Reed at Miami, uh, Ray Lewis. So you hear and see all these guys. And so you like, I was to be completely honest, how I was, I was a little, uh, you know, starstruck when I first, like, dang, okay, man, this is Ed Reed, this is, 
Ray Lewis, all these guys, Bart Scott, all these guys like that. So I'm with Samari Rowe, Chris McCallister, as you said. And so right. I'm, they like, talking to me too? They talking to me? Right. Like, come on, young blood, let's go. Let's go. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. You right, you right, you right. <laughs> yeah, so playing, playing, um, playing with those guys, man, it was great. Um, like I said, they came in and held themselves at a higher standard. And so me coming into it as an undrafted free agent and making the team, and being out there on the field with them, I, I um, and, you know, that was engraved in me too. That way, well, hey, you're on this this defense right here, and so we're gonna hold you accountable, just like we hold our own self accountable. So we expect you to be done. And so uh, you're talented enough. You're out here, and so hey, let's make it. Let's happen. And, uh, that's what we did, man. I had great, you know, one of my good buddies at, at, that played with you at uh, Georgia Tech, Devon Landry. So we was right there right there together and so man that was a blessing just to uh, have another Louisiana guy out there with me and so it was fun man it was a blessing it was a blessing yeah. Yeah. Wop, it's we gotta get WAP on here and the one Landry hey, <laughs> yeah bro you already know we're gonna get it you know we're gonna get how we live <laughs> <laughs> but so it's so funny you mentioned again expectation and no more not, how intelligent football players are I think coming up, you know, it's just, oh, like you said, oh, they're just athletes. Like, do you understand the level of intellect that it takes to put the, these, what it looks like geometry to me, advanced geometry, especially to the layman, right. onto a field? Or as my friend Quincy Avery would say, do you know how difficult it is, let's say, for a quarterback to put this feared object through it, run, try and, 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 it, and someone running 19 miles an hour to catch it while someone else is defending it, like all those different pieces to the puzzle. And sometimes maybe even younger guys don't understand that or, or people who watch the game don't understand that. So, you know, now being, you know, who you are now, if you could give some advice to, let's say, the younger you or players that are coming up, what's some advice that you would give them about, let's say, expectation or you know what they have to look forward to in the in the spirit of you know the, the game and, and who they are from the inside out. Okay, yeah, my, my younger self and what I would tell and what I tell younger guys uh, still to this day, um, young high school guys that I mentor is man, hone in on your craft. If this is something that you truly truly want to do, take it take it serious and hone on your craft and really buckle down uh, and really. Just uh, study, be be a, a a master of your craft, and, and it's not going to come overnight. It's some it's something that you constantly have to rep, you know, rep each and every day. If this is something that you truly want to be great at, and so, um, and just just be yourself. Most importantly, most importantly, and, and, and keep a sound mind, a sound heart, and uh, enjoy the process, man, because it's a beautiful thing. Most of you. We have a great support support system around you, and uh, and you have truly truly love the game. You you you'll be great. You know um, the great ones that truly truly love the game. It, it always gives back to them. Uh, definitely, what you put in is gonna come back to you. So uh, younger self, to tell you always hey, work continue work on your work on your craft and uh, you know buckle down and study study. Nice. So <clears throat> you mentioned be yourself. What does be yourself mean? So, you know, that, that's like when you were younger, somebody would probably tell you, hey, run and do this. And, it, you know, we wasn't really allowed to say why, you know, <laughs> like why, <laughs> you, you know, like, boy, because I told you. Like, But like, um, one, what does that mean to be yourself? If you had to break that down to someone that didn't understand a kid, just like be yourself. They were like, well, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean by that? Uh, don't put yourself in a, a, a box of other people's expectation of you overnight. So uh, when I say when I say be yourself, if, if you're a charismatic guy, you like to uh, you know smile and you know laugh at, at things. Hey, if that's you, be you. You know what I'm saying? Don't never conform yourself to someone else's expectation. The uh, what they expect you to be. Or whatnot, because like I said, you're your own unique self. So that that's that is what I, I truly believe by you being yourself and uh, doing the thing that you like to do, and not what someone else thinks you should go about doing it this way or that way. Uh, 
I've always tried to tell my son and I always tell him, hey, man, be yourself and continue to be a loving kid. And, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, don't let no one else basically, you know, steer you in that direction that you, you down the side you don't want to go. Hey, say that. Say that. Mm. So go ahead, Oh, I was just, just want to say that was very powerful, man, because sometimes we want to fit in and we don't want to say no. We want to be with the cool crowd, right? But sometimes the cool crowd can be the bad crowd that leads you in the wrong direction. And, and one decision can lead to uh, a lot of bad decisions. And so it's it's always, that's good to know that, you know, we, we have people like you out there in the world telling kids, be, be yourself, man. It's okay to say no. It's okay to walk away from things. You're not you're not losing anything except the moment, not your pride. You're just losing the moment. Uh, so that's that's awesome. One of the things I wanted to what's what takes me to my next question is you've been around so many inspirational people in your life, and and you've accomplished so much. Like, what inspires you, or who inspires you? Um. What inspires me, uh, what inspires me, man, is just uh, that you stay out, do well, fortunate enough that I can uh, get up and uh, uh, do what I love to do. And, uh, and that is just uh, being, being around uh, great positive people. And uh, like I said, I uh, do a little volunteer coaching. Still, I'm still around the game and I love to be around the game. And, uh, and that that gives me joy, and uh, just to pass on the knowledge that I that I know about the game and to the to the youth, and so and certain little mistakes that I made to be like, hey, let me let me let me tell you how this will go if you do it this way, or you know, I, I can just give you my guy my uh, advice and however you take you take with it, and that that's best for you. And uh, who motivates me? Um, Man, my, my uh, I would truly honestly say my uh, my uh, my son, my my son and my daughter. Uh, my son is is basically someone that uh, coming up. I've always wanted to uh, be like a tall, you know, charismatic, handsome young man. I've always wanted to be tall for some some trainer. And so uh, that's what the girls like, man. <laughs> they like tall guys. They like tall guys, and so. <laughs> he's, he's one, you know, a uh, young man that uh, that motivates motivates me because uh, I can see that if he continues to on the right path, he can be a great. And I know his mother does a great job uh, with him. And kudos to to her because he has a great support system around. Uh, shout out to his mom, right? Yeah, shout out to his mom. Uh, and so my daughter as well. Bro. She's only eight years old, and so she's a. Uh, She's more uh, of me, a jokester, charismatic uh, young lady. So she, she's a, uh, she, she's great. She's more of a, the, the entertainer of the family. And so I, it's a, I might got a, a actor, actress, or a singer on my hands. So uh, she, she's great. So I have uh, you know, my my two kids. They 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 motivate me to continue to push forward, uh, to continue to uh, leave a legacy for them behind, and so they uh, can be, you know continue to uh, be great in their life and uh, pass the same structure and just you know, that, I, that I have onto their kids and stuff like this. You know, appreciate you sharing that, you know, what your motivations are and kind of what, what inspires you. If you don't mind me asking, you know, I know that now you mentor young men and has that been uh, an important part of you, you know, in retirement, you know, from the NFL and what's been something that's been, you know, the most giving piece to you and what you've enjoyed most about life after, let's say, the, the NFL and football. Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I, I definitely get a real fulfillment and enjoyment out of that because, like I said, me coming up, I had kind of that same background, and so I think that helped me out too. I mean, I had uh, my, my uncle, uh, Stromile Swift, Reginald Robinson, guys that, that I seen when I was coming up in high school that was you know playing at a, a high level. And I uh, was having success, and so I saw them firsthand what they went through, the the, the good and the bad, and so that kind of stuck with me too uh, coming up. And so I I like to pass the same on knowledge that that was taught down to me, pass it on to them, and so 
that transition from there and uh, where I'm at, where I'm headed now in, in the business world and doing uh, doing mentorship with, and coaching at the high school level. So, yeah, most definitely. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing that piece. How can people, let's say, what, what advice would you give to people that want to mentor, that want to be that person that, you know, someone looks up to or just want to give back from their position that they have experienced, you know, greatness being at the the top of your game, the 1% of elite athletes. What's some advice that you would give to someone that says, hey, I, I want to do that. I want to help in my community. or I want to mentor others. Uh, just be be uh, sincere be sincere and uh, really it comes from the heart you know what I'm saying uh, so many people might tell you oh you should do this and if it's really not in your heart to do that you know uh, you're not going to give it your all and so you got to be sincere about what you're doing and really really it has to be warm feeling coming from the heart man uh, and me and my good buddies, uh, like I said, you know as well, PJ, uh, Joseph and I, uh, stuff like that, Travis Daniels, uh, Benny Brazil, we all talk about that all uh, all day because, like I said, we're following school. We we, uh, we are always, we're in a position just like with Benny Brazil, Benny Brazil at LSU coaching young men and, and being a mentor as well. And uh, like Joe, it, it got to be sincere. It got to come from the heart and so. That's, a, that's one thing that I would tell someone who wants to do mentorship. And yeah, you got to, uh, for one, lead by example. Because for one, kids, they, they, they're looking. They're looking. They're looking. So um, you, you got to be warm filled and uh, you got to be you got to be authentic in what you're doing. So if you're not, then I spend your words. Man, I appreciate that big time. Prince, any final thoughts? There are questions that you have for Ronnie. Man, it, I have so many questions. But I, I, before I ask my last question, I just want to talk about the the beauty of life and the how how everything comes full circle. So all of his friends from LSU, uh, well, I don't know Travis, but I, I, I know Ronnie, Joseph, and Benny, and I've all we, I've all I've experienced you know, life with all three of them. Uh, but it, it's been short lived, but you, you know, I, I had a chance to always make a connection and all of them are genuine. All of them are authentic, you know, and just, just great. You want to find yourself around. So like keeping a, a tight circle with, with, with people that's, that's going to always, you know, um, support you and anything and everything that you do and be your number one fan, man. I think that's extremely important. Uh, growing up, uh, Joseph, he was on the, he was on the, the, the other side of town. He, he grew up in Sharpstown uh, and he, he was a big, the big running back over at Sharpstown. I was a big running back in, in the SWAT, a leave Houston, Texas. Benny was, uh, I want to say he was on the North side or something. I can't remember what, what school he went to. Uh, West Bay. West Bay. Well, we went to, that's right. He went to Westbury, went right. to Westbury. And man, Benny used to beat me in track all the time. I used to be like, man, it was like, you know, we used to run the hurdles and, and I was running. I was just like, did he just start running the race after we got to the, <laughs> to the last 100 meter dash? Because he turned it on, man. Then he went to be a sensation at LSU and played in the NFL. And Joseph, you know, he had a, a stellar career in the NFL playing with the Colts and Peyton Manning won the championship as well. Um, and then Ronnie, you know, me and him playing uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, man, which was just like solid because I, I never I never really hung out with the, the offense. I hung out with the defense. I always hung out with the defensive players, man. You know, I just had a couple of offensive guys that I hung out with, but it was just strictly defense. I just love the defensive players, man. We used to always go at it, have fun, you know, joke and laugh. And um, it, 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 it allowed for me to just be myself. And when we talk about being ourselves and, and one of the things that Ronnie mentioned was about, you know, what type of legacy that you want to leave behind. Uh, that's the question that I want to ask you, uh, Ronnie, when it comes to your legacy and the one that you want to leave behind, what do you want people to say about you? I know one thing I'm going to say about you, 
that, that was a smooth mother. Shut your mouth. You know, I'm going to stop talking, but, you know, he over <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how we do it. <laughs> so uh, what's what, 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 what do you want your legacy to say? I mean, what do you want people to say about your legacy running? Oh, man, most importantly, uh, that I was uh, a great son, uh, a great brother, uh, a great uh, a great father, uh, and uh, a great husband. Uh, once I get to that, once I get to the husband, uh, the wife stayed. So, you know, so um, that's that's one thing that um, I would love my legacy to leave behind. That uh, I was a great man. That that was uh, tried his best and did everything he can to keep uh, keep my family rock solid and uh, just pass on tremendous knowledge for them to to carry on and just a, a, a loving loving individual and uh, just someone who just uh, really enjoy life and uh, really each and every day try to live life to the fullest uh, even even if you got it wrong you know uh, come back and uh, hold yourself accountable and be, uh, you know just keep pushing forward and uh, just, just being a, a great individual so I just would love for the family just to say hey Ronnie hey, he was he was a great individual and uh, we we enjoy, and it was an honor to have him in our presence. So we learned a lot from him. That's solid. That's solid. That's solid. I'd say this exact same thing. I would echo the exact same thing, man. You, my dog. I love you, bro, man. Once my, it's my, I got you. Yeah, that, that was amazing. I really liked how you said, even if you get it wrong, like just keep going. Folks need to hear that. Folks yep. need to hear that. So, that again. Yep. <laughs> so thank you so very much for sharing that uh, and, and being here with us officially. Uh, any final words from you, Ronnie, as our guest of honor? Any final words for you? Man, final words for me. Um, yeah, and how, how, how can people find you as well? Uh, uh, how I am, I'm really not a social media guy, but I, I did with that a little bit, man, on Instagram. So you can, uh, you can find me on Instagram at, at uh, our fruit a uh, Facebook, yeah, uh, running fruit. So, um, that's what you're gonna see me the majority of my time on the, on the uh, social media platform. But I just, you know, lightweight, just be posting my kids and you know, like that. So, but uh, final words, man, continue to uh, uh, to love. Team to love, and if you ain't, if you don't have it, hey, find dig deep down inside and, uh, and find that because the, the world, the way the world is going right now, and so much turmoil, and, and that that's what we need. I think that is the only thing that's gonna cure and heal everything. Just love, just love. So, yeah, thank you so very much, and Prince, you. That, that that was that was how, how can I second that man? He, just he dropped like, the mic whoa, on us, did he? He dropped the mic, bing. Like, can't know. I should go drop mic. You don't come around here dropping mics. <laughs> we the only dropper micers around here, Mister Proof. <laughs> no, <I was> <laughs> that was good, man. Yeah, I don't have it, but I, I've already spoke my piece, and he just dropped the mic. So uh, it's, awesome. it's back on you, Stan. Absolutely. And I will absolutely close it with that, with the punchline and the exclamation point. Officially, thank you, Ronnie, for uh, for joining us today and sharing your story. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I'm sure you did as much as we did. And for those of you all watching, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Game Beyond the Game. And you can join us just about every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, Game Beyond the Game's Facebook page, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, make your next move your best move. Have a good one. Hey, Peace. I want to say, the, for, for, for our go, um, for one, may hey, honor again to be on the show. And um, as as uh, Game Beyond the Game, uh, Prince, uh, you're doing a great job, man. I love the book. And um when I started reading, I took in so much, and definitely, uh, like I, me and you talked uh, a minute ago about uh, you guiding me on that that right path of uh, knowing how to uh, meditate. And so that is something that uh, wasn't practicing for my life. I want to say at least about a couple years ago, and so still to uh, right now, that is something that uh, that that I 
continues to try to uh, put into practice in that. Uh, for one, salute you, my brother, for that as well. Man, so, salute you, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. We we I appreciate it, and we both appreciate it as well, yeah. man. So, so hey, man, so, that's what we're doing. We're elevating each other, man. So yeah. that's what life is about. Yes, sir. For sure. Appreciate, appreciate that, that so brother. much, man. Appreciate that, brother. On that note, fellas, uh, fellas and, and all, ladies and everyone that's listening, we're going to head out. Peace, y'all. Peace.